All right, looks like we're live. Hello. Hi. Hi, Brenda. Hi, Gina. Hi there. So uh, this is our KIPS IT Professionalism Week Google Hangout. It's the uh, first time KIPS is testing it, and uh, hopefully it works out great and we can do more of these. Uh, so our presenters today are Brenda Byers, ISP ITCP, who is the chair of the KIPS National Board and the director of technical systems at Patash Corp. And we also have Gina Van Dalen, who is our very own professional standards manager here at the KIPS National Office. Um, Brenda will be talking about the global IT profession and just a brief uh, little bit of background about Brenda. Uh, she, uh, her first position at KIPS was as VP of the KIPS Saskatoon section in 1994. And she's also previously served on the KIPS National Board as the Saskatchewan Regional Director. And she's a graduate of the University of Saskatchewan and has a BCom in Computer Science. Uh, Brenda has developed uh, and has expertise in areas of technical support and management, program and program management, enterprise architecture, and ITIL process improvement. Uh, outside of KIPS, Brenda has also taken on the role of Vice Chairman of the Joint Venture of IEEE CES and the Australian Computer Society in developing an international IT block. And she is also on the Ethics Committee for FIPO, which is the Federation of Enterprise Architecture Professional Organizations. Uh, we also have Gina, who will be talking about defining the IT profession. And Gina manages the KIPS Professional Standards Portfolio here at the KIPS National Office, um, which also includes our KIPS certification and accreditation portfolios. Uh, Gina is also the main point of contact for schools seeking KIPS accreditation of their programs. And she's also provides support for KIPS provinces in managing the ISP and ITCP certification programs. Uh, this week is KIPS's IT Professionalism Week, which is running from, uh, it was yesterday, Monday, until this Friday. And uh, IT Professionalism Week is a yearly celebration held by KIPS, uh, which we use to increase awareness about the importance of professionalism in the IT industry today. And it's also a time to celebrate KIPS and our professionalism resources. Uh, throughout this presentation, if uh, you do have any questions for Brenda or Gina, uh, you can tweet your questions to KIPS at KIPS, so at C-I-P-S, or you can also uh, send us an email at live at KIPS.ca, L-I-V-E at KIPS.ca. And uh, after Brenda and Gina are done their presentations, uh, we'll answer some of those questions. So I think we'll start off with Gina. Thanks, Jonathan. Uh, thanks for the introduction. Um, so good morning or afternoon, uh, everyone, and, uh, and thank you for joining us uh, in today's Google Hangout session uh, during IT Professionals Week. Uh, I'm going to present a, a brief presentation today about uh, fostering the ICT profession in Canada, the, the elements that are needed to establish a profession for ICT, and, and why, uh, similar to the more established professions of, of engineering and medicine and accounting, uh, it is important to put ICT on, on the road towards professionalism, um, something, as you will see shortly, is not going to happen overnight. Uh, I'll also briefly talk about various professionalism element, elements and, and close discussion with our uh, envisioned path forward. Uh, so welcome again to this uh, first Google Hangout session, and, and don't hesitate to contact me after the presentation uh, if you have any uh, further questions. So I'll be uh, sharing with, uh, a presentation today with you here. That works. Is that visible? Yep, looks good. Okay, good. Um, yes, yeah, so um, there's my email address. So if you have any further questions after the presentation, uh, feel free to, uh, to give me a call. Uh, so today's conversation uh, is really going to focus around three main topics. The, uh, the imperative for change. Uh, the establishment uh, of an ICT profession uh, and a framework uh, for uh, ICT uh, professionalism. Sorry, I have to do this in a PDF here. <laughs> uh, 
Um, so the, the first question that I get asked a lot is, is um, aren't all ICT workers professionals? Um, so what, what is the answer to that question really? Is, is there a, a common understanding of, of the term ICT professional? Uh, and the, the short answer really is, is no. Um, unlike the, the traditional professions of, as I mentioned earlier, accounting and engineering and medicine, uh, ICT practitioners have not yet established the same kind of professionalism framework and, and related recognition. Um, so, an, an ICT professional either, either can be, you know, someone who has an acquired relevant qualification and competences or someone who can practice as an ICT practitioner with really scant knowledge and experience in the area. So, there's a very, very broad spectrum and there doesn't seem to be sort of a common benchmark for what defines uh, what, what an ICT professional is. Um, so, what does it really mean to be an ICT professional? So, KIPS has crafted a, a definition of what it believes constitutes a professional, and there is the, the four items. So, really, it, it, it's, it's about possessing a comprehensive and up-to-date understanding of a, a relevant body of knowledge, uh, demonstrating an ongoing commitment to professional development, and adhering to an agreed code of ethics and a standards of conduct, and through competent practice, uh, deliver uh, value for uh, <clears throat> excuse me for stakeholders and th this definition really uh, reflects the uh, the the importance of or the key uh, building blocks if you will uh, of the profession. So we have to just scroll this down. So those building blocks uh, are are on this slide here. Um, they're the, the four basic building blocks which are common to uh, to to most professions uh, include a body of knowledge. Uh, competencies in, in, in a domain or technical specific specialization, uh, the educational foundation, the training, and uh, the uh, the abiding by uh, by a code of ethics and and, uh, and and belonging to a professional body that that monitors and uh, your your uh, your your behavior basically and uh, there and, and has an opportunity to uh, to discipline you if indeed you violate those those professional ethics. So what really is the value of, of creating a, a profession? Um, another question that, that comes up quite frequently. And, and there, there are a number of stakeholder groups that all have a, a vested interest in ensuring that the ICT profession uh, grows up, essentially. Uh, for practitioners, um, it's really belonging to a profession would provide them a recognition of their competence and knowledge and, and also provide a sense of enhanced mobility and cred credibility. Uh, for employers, especially uh, in, in this day and age where there is a, a major skill shortage uh, predicted for the foreseeable future, essentially, having access to a pool of qualified professionals will uh, reduce cost and effort and time to recruit and deploy and train and develop and, and also provide an improved ability to align um, the, the ICT resources within, within a bus with, with business requirements. Uh, for education providers, um, the accreditation of their programs that would provide more transparency, uh, comparability, uh, and providing the opportunity to increase their market size as students now want to become part of the profession. A uh, thing that I hear quite frequently in, in, in IT programs is, uh, you know, what is my profession? Why should I be joining? Why should I be entering into a computer science or a business technology management program? Um, whereas, you know, what is what is the path to uh, to receive level jobs? Why uh, there is, there doesn't seem to be a profession uh, similar to accounting or marketing or what have you. Um, so if we can put a face onto that profession, I think it would make it easier for education providers to uh, to sell their programs and to encourage students to to enter those programs. Uh, <clears throat> For a professional societies such as KIPS, it really will allow us to assist in, in helping to mature the profession, um, and for society to, you know, akin to the more tradi traditional professions, uh, professionalizing, professionalizing, sorry, the ICT industry would really reduce the risk to the public. Um, from for government, it really is about sort of enhanced visibility of supply and demand of ICT skills, and, and helping to provide a a robust and granular basis for, for informed policy setting, basically, and, and uh, also, uh, especially in the day and age of, of global competitiveness, uh, it really provides an enhanced competitiveness on a global stage, uh, resulting from improved efficiencies uh, within uh, within the industry. 
So the uh, the imperative of change. So there there are some strong motives for, for maturing the, the uh, IT profession, and here are, are listed four. Uh, there's the, the the ICT skills gap, of course. Uh, Um, maybe in the meantime, while, while we may wait for Gina to come back, you can talk a little bit about some of the events, other events that are happening around IT Professionalism Week here in Canada. Um, sure. Um, actually, there's one going on in Saskatchewan in particular, right? Right. Yep. Tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, you probably know a little bit more about. Oh, okay. That. Yes. Um, in our Regina location, they have a luncheon that's um, happening at the Delta Regina, and uh, Linda Linskog, who is a SaskTel retiree, will be talking about ethics in IT, and which which definitely connects um, with what Gina was talking about about growing professionalism and definition of the IT profession and the fact that uh, KIPS has a very strong code of ethics element to membership and to their designations is part of what Linda will be talking about but she'll also be talking about the importance of ethics within the IT industry itself and what it means to the public, the general protection of the general public as well as protection of the uh, employers and uh, the idea of an IT professional who does sign the code of ethics then it must adhere to that code of ethics in their professional performance. So she'll talk a little bit about that tomorrow and um, sh the hope is too that um, in the future she could also be visiting some of the other provinces and she has offered other provinces an opportunity to bring her in and, and speak to that topic as well. So great. Hopefully that could try to yeah. get her to do a, a Google Hangout as well. Yes. She, I'm sure she'd be very excited, yeah. Yeah. Great. Um, yeah, just a couple other events to mention is uh, Calgary they have an event today actually, which um, is the power of integrated data. Uh, a solution for many challenges facing oil and gas companies. And um, yeah, so that's be happening today. I'm not sure if you can still register, um, but uh, visit the uh, KIPS events calendar off the KIPS national website and uh, you can uh, see if uh, you're still able to register. Actually, start time is uh, 12 p.m. Calgary time. Um, so uh, it'll be soon. Uh, the other event is on November 2nd, which uh, is in Toronto, which is uh, overcoming the challenges of integration. And the seminar is fully sponsored by Bennett Jones. Uh, and there's actually no fee to uh, attend this event. And uh, sandwich, a sandwich lunch will be provided. So it's a pretty good deal. It can't go wrong there. Um, actually, maybe also while we're waiting for Gina, maybe I'll just. Uh, Got a couple questions. Um, from your perspective, uh, Brenda, what value do you see from being a KIPS member? Well, for sure, um, you know, it, it is a question that um, I think often comes up in, in a member's mind when they're renewing their membership or when they, they first enter into the KIPS environment. and. I think one of the biggest things that KIPS has provided me is the connections with so many other IT professionals across Canada, the introduction to those members and the access to those members and often their uh, senior management people within the IT profession but also they may be, ex they have expertise that I'm looking for in the industry. So, I mean, it really has opened doors um, to make those connections very easily. And it, what it does is provide you the access to expertise right at your fingertips when you need it and connection to all those professionals across Canada. But I think the other thing for me is the ability obviously to connect with local members and the local IT industry 
here in Saskatchewan. And um, I think what you find out relatively quickly is that how close we all are connected to each other and how easy it is to uh, bring in you know, potentially some really senior IT people and get them connected, for example, to students. And um, we've done that. We've done some joint len uh, luncheons here in Saskatchewan where we'll invite uh, a student group in from an IT program and uh, have them have direct access to CIOs and a VP of IT type uh, level of professionals. So what we can then do is give direct feedback to the students what the the companies in the industries are looking for specifically from a skill set or from soft skills like communication or project management and that sort of thing so those are the kinds of things that I see are a huge benefit in belonging to KIPS and um, you know obviously the materials that are provided and, and other our international connections and then of course the recognition of the designations that we deliver and the accredited programs uh, and I think a lot of people don't appreciate the work and effort that goes into accrediting programs and and what it does for institutions is validate their content with uh, again expert experts from the IT industry, from the academic institutes all across Canada will actually come to the to the institute or the university and review their current programs to get that feedback and uh, be able to improve their programs should they need to or update them. So I mean the accreditation piece is kind of that unsung hero that sits behind all that we do to help the industry in general. So um, I could probably go on all day but um, you know those are the kind of things that I, I see KIPS representing for me and, and delivering value uh, in my membership for sure. Great. Um. Well, I guess while we wait for Gina then, why don't we just jump straight into your presentation then? Sure, sure. I um, I un unfortunately don't, I, or, or fortunately, one of the two, I don't have um, PowerPoints to present. I really just wanted to cover some points. And it was specifically around the topic of um, the global IT profession and kind of to give people out there a little bit of an update as to what's happening in on the world stage of uh, in the IT domain itself and um, I was fortunate enough and and of those of you who've read a few of the blogs on the KIPS website about uh, my trip to Amsterdam and the World Computer Congress that was organized by IFIB the International Federation of Informational What's IFIP? Inter Federation of Information Professionals. Um, and the World Congress was an amazing, amazing event. Um, it brought together um, 90 different countries, 50 or more different organizations like KIPS from around the world gathered in Amsterdam for a three-day Congress. There was presenters again from uh, all different domains of IT but also there were presentations about uh, you know countries and countries struggling and trying to find their way as far as growing their IT profession and, and Gina's presentation was touching on what that takes and it's not a quick process. It's a long-term commitment of the country and the professionals and IT professionals in the country to develop the institutions and the processes around certification of professionals as well as accreditation of programs itself. So we are very lucky in Canada to have a mature organization like KIPS that's been around since the 1950s and KIPS has always been there to help guide the IT profession to provide the certification to our members and to accredit the programs as they're defined within the country. So 
what is happening is countries that are looking to improve their processes are looking to mature countries like Canada um, and especially to in, in Europe there's lots of newly developing countries that are looking for guidance on the creation of that IT profession. So uh, there's another organization that was uh, KIPS is a founding member, it's IP3 and that is an organization that, that's bringing together uh, a group of professionals out of organizations like KIPS from around the world that are helping to create roadmaps for countries who are looking to generate uh, processes to define certification within their country in the IT domains. So I mean uh, this again is a value that an organization can like KIPS can provide on the world in the world to develop institutions and certification bodies and you think well you know how hard can it be but in in a country where for example all agencies if you think about it this way all agencies that are delivering public services are municipal public or federal governments there's not really organizations that represent members and individuals. So think of the challenges of organizing IT practitioners in a country like that to become certified and so um, again like IP3 and KIPS are working with these countries to provide them a roadmap and the interesting part of it and again this is another I guess a, a membership value that for example KIPS provides me is a connection to countries around the world that are asking for assistance. So you get to meet IT professionals from around the world that are asking advice on exactly what KIPS does. So what it I think really has provided me is an appreciation for Canada and our mature level of uh, professional organizations and the maturity of the IT profession itself and the fact that we have a body of knowledge that's available to our members and we're growing that body of knowledge potentially into an internationally accepted body of knowledge. So those are the kind of things that from a global IT profession that it is becoming a reality and it's basically IT without borders and you know we see that in um, presentations like we're having today where we're sitting all across Canada talking to other members answering questions and you know we'll soon be having these uh, with representatives from all around the world with similar organizations like KIPS and delivering information and, and talking about the challenges of the IT profession all around the world and um, kind of just a final point to let people know that the challenges are not any different than what we're seeing in Canada. People are struggling um, to really connect with the IT profession professionals, um, to coordinate them, to uh, bring them together, to ensure that we have a level of competency in our industry that's acceptable to everyone and have some transparency around that level of professionalism and competencies and really then to communicate to the industry what they should be expecting from an IT professional and you know those are some of the goals obviously that KIPS wants to deliver but it's the same challenge in all the countries around the world that are developing and growing their IT profession as well so that's it's kind of exciting for sure okay. and welcome back Gina yeah, I don't know what happened. I'm not <laughs> sure. I, I kept talking and I went back to the presentation and uh, clearly uh, I, I must have, I was bumped out of the, the Google session for some reason. Okay, can you see this? Hello? Yeah, uh, I can. Yeah, there we go. 
Okay. Just trying to find out where I was. <laughs> Sorry about that. Did you see this slide? Uh, yeah. I think that's where we left off. Okay. So if I um, <laughs> if you lose me again, uh, maybe just give me a quick call, uh, Jonathan, and uh, uh, I can. I'm not sure why it's doing that, but it's asking me to join the session. Um, so just let me know if uh, if if I'm, if I'm bumped out again, because <laughs> I, I can't see unfortunately, because I'm in the presentation. Oh, I see. So you're just talking to yourself for a while. <laughs> I was for a very long time, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> so right, um, the um, in terms of the the imperative for change, the the reasons there. Are, uh, I'm not sure whether you heard, but there, there are really strong motives for maturing the ICT profession. Uh, there is an ICT skills, job, skills gap uh, projected uh, globally for about 13 percent. Um, in, in Canada, we're looking at between 106,000 people that, uh, that uh, where we need to fill the positions, and, and it will really will break, make a, an, act as a break on competitiveness, uh, given its its important role as an enabler of business value. Uh, the poor public image of the ICT profession really impacting the numbers entering the profession. Uh, the low level of ICT expertise and the siloed knowledge uh, really restricting pay, uh, practitioners and seeing the big picture of ICT and, and its interconnectedness and uh, the instances of course of failed ICT projects, uh, the, the famous uh, ICT black swans. Um, uh, so the need for ICT professions to mature however does serve not solely stem from a desire to fill anticipated skills gaps or to reduce the number of ICT projects which are laid or over budget. Uh, instead, uh, the motive for, for change are, are, I think, much more profound. Uh, currently, ICT underpins almost every aspect of society, uh, including finance, health, transportation, and there are very few sectors that really remain resistant to its influence, and uh, the reach of, of ICTs is vast. So. However, as the application and adoption of ICT in, in society grows, uh, so too do the potential risks to society, and that risk really needs to be managed. As, um, as professions uh, emerge, when practitioners are required to apply certain specialist knowledge, if you will, in a chosen field, uh, and where f failing to apply this knowledge successfully, it can harm society, or for, just imagine the, the consequences of a, a lay person operating as a doctor or, or operating as an architect. So, because ICT is now so embedded in our society that the consequences of its failure now really represent real threats to the effective uh, functioning of society. So I think the call to mature the ICT profession is, is really becoming clear. I assume I'm still here. <laughs> yeah, we can hear you. Okay, good. Just check in. So, in terms of the maturity of the profession, um, where are we really in, t in terms of the, the ladder of professionalism, if you will. So the British Computer Society did an interesting study about five years ago where they used the Carnegie Mean Mellon maturity model, um, identified the elements of the mature profession and mapped the IT industry to that maturity model. And it includes a developing stage and an, and an established stage with various requirements, if you will, at each level. And it really wasn't surprising to see that the ICT Um, again, uh, this slide provides a snapshot of what the elements are that need to be satisfied before the ICT profession reaches that established level that, that I just presented in the maturity model. And the foundational elements uh, talked about earlier fall under sort of three main headings that constitute the profession, professional development, infrastructure support, and professional society influence, and a, a lot of progress has been made globally in, in these areas. Um, and in some countries like Australia and the UK and Canada are really at the forefront of, of developing the, these infrastructure pieces. Uh, that progress, however, has not really spread across the globe yet. There are good initiatives taking place everywhere, but it, it's not a, unlike accounting, for example, or medicine or engineering, it, it's not a global uh, perspective yet. So in, in terms of the, the, the silos that you see there, um, in terms of professional education programs, they are obviously exist in, 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 all, in most countries. 
and some of that education is also becoming accredited. There are some uh, some very good efforts taking place in a number of countries: the UK, Australia, uh, Canada, the US, uh, but and a whole bunch of uh, Southeast Asian countries have established um, very solid accreditation processes uh, that are now being recognized under an accord called the Sol Sol Accord, uh, sort of an umbrella organization essentially. Uh, professional societies have been established across the globe, uh, most of who, uh, which are members of uh, IFIP, the International Federation of Information Processing Societies, which represents over about 50 countries. Um, the global recognition um, uh, about has been has been identified by the IP3. It really defines sort of the elements of what constitutes an IT professional, and some of the IFIP societies have been accredited by IP3, really demonstrating that they have a place. The elements that you see on this slide, and KIPS is one of those organizations. Um, KIPS actually made uh, some significant progress in, in most of these areas. We have a common body of knowledge. Uh, we do accreditation, have received national and international recognition for that. Our certification is uh, uh, recognized globally under the IP3, um, and we have a, a, a body of knowledge, standards of practice and uh, are, are very much on the road to, to, to creating a professional law society. I still, I'm still here? Yep. Okay, good. So yeah, just briefly, uh, a couple of slides on um, the, the body of knowledge and, and some of the elements. Uh, so I just wanted to touch on those foundational elements of the ICT profession. Um, box really reflects documented accepted good practices and, and support and enhanced understanding in, in, in a subject area. Uh, most professions require all its IT, all its practitioners rather, possess a, what they call a shared understanding and, and the language uh, of their respective domains. So if you're talking to nurses and, and doctors, for example, they, they have a common understanding that is sort of encapsulated within their, in their body of knowledge. So KIPS has gone on that road and has developed the Guide to the Common Body of Knowledge, uh, which was adopted last year, and um, is using it to, to align the, 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 the foundation of a certification program with the CBOC, and it's also envisioned that this will be used in, uh, in the future to, uh, for education course providers to map their course offerings to this uh, foundational level BOC in, in, in future years. So competencies, oops, sorry. Competencies, uh, again, an understanding of the uh, the capability and competence needed of individuals working in various roles, essential for organizations to effectively recruit and develop sustainable employees. And the understanding the core areas of expertise required by the various roles. So more and more you start to see uh, professional certification programs aligning with the skills frameworks and uh, that provide not only the ability to um, to assess uh, what level an individual is working at, uh, but also assess specific competencies within uh, uh, within their their domain of specialization. Uh, the two frameworks that uh, that KIPS is using is Sophia, the skills framework for the information age, and the ICTC uh, competency profiles. So very comparable uh, skills frameworks, extensively used by industry and uh, forming a, a great basis, a great foundation for, uh, for our certification program. So in terms of professional ethics, um, uh, clearly paramount to maturing any, uh, any profession and to, to garnering a positive uh, public perception. Every, every profession has, um, has a professional code of conduct. It's really a, a defining aspect of, of any profession and, and it involves adhering to a professional, ethical, professional ethical conduct and um, um, you know, KIPS has been um, promoting the, the uh, Code of Ethics uh, since, since it was uh, created in 1958, um, where it became a requirement for all members joining the organization to adhere to a professional code of conduct and standards of conduct, and there would be ramifications if, if you fail to, um, to abide by those. Um, there would be consequences. So that notion has, um, has, uh, has, been, has been maintained over the years. It's, it's, uh, embedded strongly within our accreditation program and in our certification program and uh, really forms the, the foundation of uh, one of the foundational pieces of, of, of uh, the profession we are, uh, we are creating. So the road forward, um, there are a couple of items. Um, 
we uh, we've already have an operating model as I just just outlined for promoting ICT professionalism. It really will be a matter of continuing to build as, uh, the scalability and the sustainability of that operating model. Um, we uh, we will continue to mobilize uh, ICT professionals and stakeholders uh, both. Uh, uh, nationally and globally. Uh, we have engagement with our partners uh, CCICT and ICTC and ITAG um, to, uh, to really instill this notion of professionalism within the industry. Um, the Guide to the Common Body of Knowledge, uh, we will continue to promote that and uh, embed it and align it with our, our various uh, um, standard related products so such as certification and, and accreditation and uh, we have also uh, will uh, engage in, in uh, efforts um, that will look at specialized bodies of knowledge. Um, most recently, we uh, we started engagement with the IEEE CS, which has now started a, a project to look at an IT box, for example. Um, we will continue to promote the use of skills frameworks. Um, uh, Sophia, of course, is one of them, and, and uh, the ICT, ICTCCP, and really in an effort to not only align our certification program, but also to identify more clearly what the various career streams are within the IT industry. Uh, I assume still, I'm still here? Yep. Okay, good. Um, we continue to promote confidence in education. We currently have an accreditation program that is uh, focused on computer science, software engineering, um, and computing programs at the college level. We will brought, we'll start, we'll look, start looking at broadening that program to look at the broader landscape of, of uh, the educational landscape and um, uh, really instilling a, a level of quality uh, control and, and, and what have you within um, within the education. Um, providing paths for validating non-formal ICT education training. Uh, we have started discussions with uh, ICTC to look to look at that specifically through means of, of exams or uh, prior learning and assessment and recognition type of efforts. Uh, the drive, uh, the adoption among organizations uh, we have uh, for the last 50 years been been very um, active, actively engaging the industry in in the uh, the narrative about professionalism, and we will continue to do that, and um, we'll continue our our engagement with local and global ICT professional stakeholder groups through efforts such as Solacord and IP3 and IFIP and IEEE CS. So that concludes my presentation. You made it. I made it. Three, only took three times. <laughs> uh, well, next time it'll be two times, and then eventually no glitches, right? Right. <laughs> so were there any questions regarding uh, the presentation? Um, yeah, well, I just had uh, just kind of two uh, general questions that I wanted to ask both of you. Um, just to speak a little bit about uh, the value of both KIPP certification and KIPP accreditation and how that all ties into creating an IT profession. Brenda, do you want to go first? Um, I, I sure can and um, I talked a little bit about this earlier as well in regards to KIPS as an organization and I think the accreditation piece is a little bit of the unsung hero that rests behind some of the main activities that KIPS does but it is definitely the grounding mechanism for the IT industry and the fact that we have very solid competency-based IT programs all across Canada that are accredited by KIPS is uh, a huge benefit to the industry because what we are guaranteed then is the candidate designation membership that we have provides students the career path for the certification streams. So out of our accreditation programs come students that are what we could we consider candidate members for our ISP and ITCP and uh, those designations now are uh, legislated in many provinces across Canada meaning that they are 
uh, a right to title, meaning that you, you need to be a member, you need to sign the Code of Ethics, and um, you, in, in order to, to display that designation and use that designation, you need to adhere to those Code of Ethics and the, um, basically the, the Code of Practice as well in the IT industry. And, and you've, you've, achieved a certain level of education and experience and then you also need to have continuous learning through our tracking of our learning credits that every three years you need to submit for renewal against your designations within KIPS. So it has all those aspects that all other designations that many people are aware of um, and it again helps to mature the IT profession which um, are, it, it is definitely alive and well and, and growing in Canada for sure. So, you know, for me, that that is really the heart of, of what KIPS is and also what the IT profession is. And we need to ensure that all those aspects are maintained within our country and really help, like I said earlier, in um, and I think Gina touched on it as well, it, it is incumbent on mature countries like Canada to assist other countries and provide them road, roadmaps to doing the same thing that, that KIPS has been doing in Canada for many, many years. So that, that's kind of how I see certification and accreditation and the connection to the IT profession for sure. Great, thanks Brenda. G Gina, anything to add to that, or? Uh, that no, I think that was a good, good answer to a uh, comprehensive answer to the, to the question. Yeah. All right. All right then. Well, uh, there's nothing else that either of you would like to add. I think we'll wrap this up. And uh, yeah, even with a couple minor glitches, overall uh, a pretty successful first uh, Google Hangout for Kips, and uh, definitely would like to do more of these for sure. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Brenda. Thanks, Gina. Yes. Thanks. Thank you. It was lots of fun. We definitely need to do this. Maybe once a week, Jonathan. What the heck? Sure. If you're <laughs> up for it, I am. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. All right. Take care. Bye.